Thank you for tuning back into HR Revivals with Tarzy Hour for Revival. I'm your brother in the Lord, Brother HR. It's always the hour for Revival. Bless the Lord, Father. Hide me behind the cross. There'll be none of me but all of you. Speak of these up to clay and everybody leave here singing. I got just what I wanted from the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. I got three people already tuning in. Brother Paul, God bless you. Sister Donna, God bless you. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Sister Teresa, God bless you. Hallelujah. I want, I want to thank you for tuning back in. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. It won't be the same as the last message. I believe this will be even different. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterward he was hungry. Now when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones be come bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. Now, mark this down if you're taking notes, somebody. Say the first time was for the flesh. The first time he said it is written, it was to remind the flesh that God is the sustainer of the soul and the body. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Because the Bible said it was in the end of the 40-day fast. It was after the fast was over that Jesus was hungry. So when he said this to the enemy, he was reminding its flesh and the enemy, you better know your place. Don't you say a word. Thank you, Jesus. Can somebody say that's good preaching already? Thank you, Jesus. See how already it's different? Thank you, Jesus. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, it says. Notice, he did in 40 days what the children of Israel in the same wilderness couldn't do for 40 years. He did in 40 days and 40 nights. I'm here to tell you by the Holy Ghost of God that what looked like it wasn't going to get done for you, God is accelerating your blessing and he's going to pull you through. Today is your day of deliverance. Today is your day of redemption. Today is the day of salvation and the joy of the Lord is your strength and you feel weak because of the enemy today. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Somebody come on and Shout amen. Now, when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him up into a holy city, into the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, hey, Throw yourself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge over you and you, and in their hands uh, they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Wait one second. Did you hear that? He done it a second time. I missed that in the first service. That's why God wanted me to get the second service. Thank you, Jesus. He said, If you be the Son of God, he said it twice to Jesus. Now, wait a minute. Remember, Jesus heard, and all the people there, some heard thunder, the Bible says. Others actually heard a voice from heaven. And it said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. At that point, Jesus had not cast out one devil, not healed one sick person, not saved anybody, not forgiven any sin yet. But still, he was the father's son, and the father was well pleased with him. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. But he said it a second time to Jesus. The enemy said it a second time. Wait one minute. The enemy came after the character of Christ. But notice this, he tempted Christ. 
Wait a minute. Thank you, Jesus. Wait, wait. Let me show y'all this. Notice now, we know the Bible says in James 1, 13, that God cannot be tempted, nor can God tempt any man. I'm going to help y'all out right here. People have asked me, if Jesus was God, how could he be tempted? God became flesh and dwelt among us. Satan couldn't tempt God's divinity, but he could tempt the skin that God was in. Can somebody say amen? That's good preaching. So he was after the flesh that God was in. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. But look at this. Thank you, Jesus. He was telling the enemy, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Thank you, Sister Dottie. Every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Wait right here. Jesus is the bread of life. He was the manna come down from heaven, as he said. While they were in the wilderness, they were feasting on him. Come on, somebody. Thank you, Jesus. God can, God can sustain your life. God can sustain my life. How do we know this? The Bible says it. The Bible says the Spirit of God is to keep us from stumbling. Amen. If he who raised Christ from the dead lives in you and I, and he was able to keep Christ, he's able to keep you too, my friend. Thank you, Jim. He said, he who began a good work in you shall see it to completion to the day of Christ. Amen. He who began a good work in you shall see it to completion. God ain't done working on you yet. I'm working on a building. No, oh, it's a true foundation. I'm holding up the blood stain. Banner for the Lord. And when I get tired, tired, tired. Working on this building. I'm going up to heaven, Lord. Lord, to get my reward. My reward. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Now when the tempter came to him, he said, if you are the Son of God. But now he said it twice to Jesus. If you are the Son of God. The devil came after the character of the anointing of Christ. He came after the character of Christ. He tried to make him doubt the very word of God. The same trick that Satan tried to pull on Eve in the Garden of Eden said, did God really say that? Some people would get a word from God and say, Lord, did I really hear you? Or was that me talking? Or was that the enemy talking? Because there's three people talking a lot of times. There's you talking, there's the enemy talking, and then there's God talking. And there's a lot of people who don't know how to decipher the voices. Amen. I tell you what, I've told people before. A lot of people thought the prophets of old was crazy. If they would have lived in our day, a lot of them would have been in straight jackets by now because the world would think they're out of their mind. That's what the world thinks about the prophets of God. They think they're crazy. That's what the world thinks. The Bible says the gospel is foolishness to them that are perishing. The preaching of the cross is foolishness to them that are perishing. But the Bible says we need to be of good cheer. Thank you, Jesus. Hebrews 4.15, the Bible says that he was tempted with every sin but failed not. Hebrews 4.15, he loved us so much he became one of us. Thank you, Jesus. Even to the point that he let himself become tempted. That he might say, I sympathize with you. I know what you're going through. Amen. Somebody say, thank God he knows my language. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. But look at this. 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says this. 
that God shall not let you be tempted by evil, but when you are tempted, that's because you're your own flesh. My own flesh. When you are tempted, he shall always, that he shall provide a way out that you may be able to stand up under it. I want to tell you why he said stand up under it. Because we are seated with Christ in heavenly places. Come on, somebody. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Seated with Christ in heavenly places. Let's go back to Matthew, though. It was after the fact that he fasted that his flesh was ready for some nourishment. Satan came at the weakest moment of the flesh. Not in faith, but of the flesh. Thank you, Jesus. He came to tempt the flesh that was hungry. Thank you, Jesus. But when Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. Now, Jesus, the word of God made flesh, and he sent his word and healed them of all their diseases. But wait a one second. Do you understand what I'm saying? When he said, it is written, he's saying, I done said it before, and I'll say it again. Thank you, Jesus. I hope y'all are enjoying the second message. Amen, the second service. It is written again, he said, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Again, the devil took him on an exceedingly high mountain. Wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. Look at this. You shall not tempt the Lord your God. He's saying, I still got control over you. You still got to bow your feet to me. You still got to bow your knees to me. You still got to come under my authority. Get up under my feet where you belong. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus said to him, It is written again, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Again the devil took him on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these things will I give to you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. The devil was reminded twice of his place that he still had to bow his knee to the authority of God. The Bible says in Revelation, Hey, Sister Didi, amen. The Bible says in Revelation that on that day every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess, including Satan himself shall bow his knee and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Hell will bow its knee on that day. Because, see, I don't care how hard the enemy's been coming at you. Well, I do care. I'm saying, though the enemy's been coming at you hard, he's still got to ask permission. Just like he did with Job, he had to do with Peter. He's got to ask the Father's permission to tempt you. He can't just tempt you. He's got to ask permission to tempt. But you know what? God will take advantage of the enemy's opportunity to tempt you. And he'll get the flesh worked out and bring faith in its place. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Just like with Jesus talking to Peter, he said, Satan has requested of me that I let him sift you as wheat, shake you up. But when you are, but I have prayed for you that your flesh, that your the, that I have prayed for you that your faith fail you not. The flesh was going to fail him, but the faith wouldn't. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Let me tell you something with that awesome news that every knee, including the devil's knee, must bow to God. All you witches out there watching me today, I want you to know something that my daddy's big, bigger and better than your daddy. 
My daddy done beat up your daddy with a big old stick and let him go packing like the little coward that he is. Lord have mercy, a lot of people are afraid of the devil. I'm not afraid of the enemy. I'll stand toe to toe with any demon. I'm not afraid of the devil. Because I know who lives in me. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Can somebody say thank you, Jesus? And he said to him, All these things will I give you. If you fall down and worship me, then Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Then the devil left him, and the other translations say, For a season. And behold, angels came and ministered to him. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. But let me explain something to you. Do you know? Do you know that when Peter started walking in the flesh, the Lord called the devil out of Peter? Matthew, Matthew, Matthew 16, 23. Thank you, Jesus. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me, for you are not mindful of the things of God, but of the things of man. He says, You're not walking in flesh. He said, You're not walking in faith. You're walking in flesh. Jesus was saying, I'm looking past the flesh by faith, and I'm seeing that spirit that's still attaching itself to your flesh. He said, get thee behind me, Satan. He was talking to the spirit that was in Peter that was trying to control his mind. But like I said, Jesus knew who he was when he got in the wilderness. So many people today don't know who they are when they get into a wilderness moment. They're like, oh God, where are you at? I get that way sometimes. But, I mean, we know who we are in God, but at the same time, if you don't keep the mindset of who you are and whose you are in God, then when the enemy comes into that wilderness place, he's going to mess with the mind. That's the first thing he's going to do is, are you a son of God? Are you a daughter of God? And just like he did with Peter, Satan will always bring people you love to mess with you. He'll always try to use somebody you love to take you away from your calling. Jesus was saying he was getting ready to go to the cross. Peter said, oh, no, you're not. I won't let him touch you. The devil was speaking through Peter, and he said, I'm going to ruin your plans. Jesus said, get thee behind me, Satan. Thank you, Jesus. Get under my feet, devil. I'm still in control of this situation. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, have mercy. I think the second service was even more powerful than the first service. Thank you, Jesus. For those who missed the, second, the first service, go back and watch the second service. <laughs> you know what I mean? Thank you, Jesus. Just like the man with a Gadarean demon. Matthew 8, 29. The demon ran and fell at his feet and said, What have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? Have you come to torment me before the time? What was he saying? He was saying, I've got nothing in you that I can draw from. I've got no place to draw anything in you. I've got no offense I can work with. I've got no sickness. I've got no disease. There's nothing in you I can mess with. Thank you, Jesus. Actually, the second sermon is more powerful than the first because there's a lot more revelation in the second one. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. The demon saw he had nothing to take from Christ. Do you know? <laughs> Poor old devil couldn't even catch a break. 
Lord have mercy, Jude 1 and 9, when Satan went looking for the body of Moses. Why? Because when Christ resurrected, the Bible says that many that were asleep in their grave believers rose up with them because there was so much power when he got up out of that grave on that resurrection morning that all the graves around him burst open and he stepped out into life eternal. The Bible said he, oh, the Bible said that he led captivity captive and they who believed in him went with him. All you Catholic brothers and sisters watching, there is no purgatory. Let me tell you, he done sealed off eternity. The gulf is closed. There was never no purgatory anyways. It's not biblical. And I love you enough to tell you the truth that it's not biblical. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I hope people still love me. Hallelujah. I know God does. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. But the Bible shows us that Satan couldn't even catch a break with the angels. Because when he went looking for the body of Moses, he said, the Bible said he came there and Michael was standing there. And it says, Michael, without sending a hurling accusation against Satan, said, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. Even the angel used the authority of the power of Christ. Let me tell you something. We overcame the devil by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of our testimony. Revelation 12 and 11. Thank you, Jesus. Like I said, we need to know who we are before we get in the wilderness place. And I'm actually closing with this. But just like in the time of Pharaoh and Moses, this is how you give the devil a nervous... I didn't give the title a second time either. I didn't get the title a second time either. How to give the devil a nervous breakdown. This is how you give the devil a nervous breakdown. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. You fast, you pray, you worship the Lord, you read your Bible. You worship God in spirit and in truth. You get God in you and God will come forth through you, and the enemy will have no place to stand. The Bible says, Therefore submit yourself to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee. The devil had a panic attack, a nervous disorder, when God got done with him. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. devil's been giving the church a lot of panic attacks lately. It's time we give him one. It's time we give the devil a nervous breakdown. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let me, let me explain this to you real quick, and then I'm closing the second service. Thank you, Jesus. Just like in the days of Moses, when Pharaoh tried to give the children of Israel the route, I let this go and I let that go, but you you can keep this here and I, I let you go if you'll keep this here. And I love what Moses said. He said, Now who on a hoof shall be left behind? And when God got done with that devil that was named Pharaoh, when he got done with that spirit of Pharaoh, you know what happened? Pharaoh let God's people go. Because he said, I can't take it no more. Get out of here. Pack your bags and leave. And he says, if you need anything with Egypt, take it with you. He had lost his sanity to the point he said, take everything of Egypt's with you. And the Bible said when they left Egypt, they had spoiled the wealth of Egypt, that there was not one thing left of theirs. They took all of the money, all of the silver, all the gold, all of everything that Egypt had. They spoiled and bankrupt Egypt. 
God today is about to bankrupt your enemy by giving him a nervous breakdown. He's going to say, here, here, have it all back. Not only are you going to get the sevenfold back, when the thief is caught, he must give it back sevenfold. You're going to get Deuteronomy 111, the thousandfold return. Cutable shake. Come on, somebody. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. I love you, Lord. If you're lost or backslid, pray this prayer with me. Dear Jesus, I repent of my sins. I believe that you died on the cross, that God the Father raised you from the dead, and I am saved. Father, fill me with your spirit that I might make heaven my home. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Now, friend, if you're sick in your body, I curse every devil of sickness. I command it to loose you and let you go free. I command a creative miracle in your spirit, soul, mind, and body right now in Jesus' name by the power of the Holy Ghost of God in Jesus' name. Now, if you're bound up, I command deliverance in your mind, spirit, soul, and body, creative miracle in your mind. For the Lord gives perfect peace to those whose mind is set upon him in Jesus' name. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, God. Every addiction receive an eviction by the holy conviction of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Get out, you devils, that bind them in Jesus' name. Turn them loose and let them go free in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, bless you, Holy Ghost. This was an awesome second service, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, if you've not been filled with the Holy Ghost and fire, Jesus is the baptizer in the Holy Ghost and in fire, and out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. Lord, do it now. In Jesus' name, Lord, wash into the water of the word. Fire. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. All right. Somebody wants me to say the prayer of salvation slower. Okay, I sure will. Pray this with me. Dear Jesus, I repent of my sins. I believe you died on the cross. That God the Father raised you from the dead. And I am saved in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Father, fill me with your spirit that I might make heaven my home. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Write to me. Let me know what God has done for you. Kid Henry, K I D D H E N R Y 617, gmail.com. Kid Henry, K I D D H E N R Y 617, at gmail.com. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Glory be to God in heaven. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I want to celebrate your new life with you. Thank you, Jesus. I want to celebrate your healing and your deliverance with you. Thank you, Lord. Now, for those who desire to give, we now have PayPal. The link will be at the top of the video for those on Facebook, the bottom of the video for those on YouTube. As you support this ministry, your love gifts will help us keep going around the world and abroad to preach the gospel of Jesus. Very soon, in the next few days, the tent goes up, y'all. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. The tent's getting ready to go up. You don't want to miss that tent meeting. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. And it will be live. It will be live. It will be aired live on Facebook and on YouTube. But let me explain this to you. There's nothing like being there in person. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be anointed. I know you're going to feel the anointing on the video, but we would love for you to be there in person to celebrate with us. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Like I said, the link will be at the top of the video for those on Facebook, the bottom of the video for those on YouTube, for those who do feel led to give. 
Your love gives larger smile, keeps helping us go around the world to bring the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for tuning in to HR Revivals. It's always the hour for revival. I'm your brother and the Lord, Brother HR. It's always the hour for revival. I'll see you there in the next meeting or in the air in heaven. And I love you. God bless. Bye-bye.